Lost up in no man's land of the Northwest Territories. They were lost up in no man's land. The Martin Hartwell story. Hey there, rednecks, preppies, redneck preppies. It's me, the redneck preppy. How you doing today? Great, good. So longtime viewers of the channel may remember back in March 2020 that I unveiled my personal and primary survival kit in a video, what I dubbed at the time the Mark I version. Today the long promised update. Now as you'll see I made a number of changes in my kit, some additions, deletions and substitutions. Now I'm going to follow the same basic format as the first video, however I'm going to be moving a little quicker in this one and not get into too much in-depth explanation into each item of the kit. Now what I would suggest you do is watch the Mark I video, you can find the link at the top right corner and the description, where you'll get a full explanation into each item which will then inform some of the changes that I've made in the intervening period. Now as with the first iteration of the kit, my survival kit is geared to my needs. And if I'm going to get lost anywhere, chances are it's going to be the boreal forests of Northern Ontario. Now, as I'm fond of saying, every survival kit is an evergreen product, including this one, meaning that it's going to constantly go through changes as I add, remove, and substitute better items. Let's get into it. So the knife, uh, nothing has changed here. I'm still using the Mora knife, bushcraft knife with its 4.3 inch stainless steel blade. Uh, as you can see, the sheath has an integrated knife sharpener, uh, good for in the field blade maintenance, and a fire steel that you can use in conjunction with the spine of the knife. So, very happy with this knife. I've been using it quite regularly in my outdoor adventures. I got nothing but praise for it, it's great. I really like the rubberized handle too. I think that's really awesome. And that's the knife. And the pouch. Uh, I'm still using the US Army individual first aid pouch, which measures eight inches wide by nine inches high by four inches deep. Uh, I'm still looking for a replacement for this pouch as I've never really liked it. Uh, but to date, I still haven't found anything worthwhile. It does have the advantage of having you know, a decent amount of room in it, and it is fairly rugged in construction. So, eh, you know what, until I find something better, I'll probably stick with this. All right, so as I stated in the Mark I video, as soon as I'm in a survival situation, I'm going to be pulling out two things to be on my person. Uh, the first is a paracord necklace uh, that has a mini flashlight and a whistle, a very loud whistle. Uh, I also take out this Sunto MC2 mirror compass. This is the North American version. You can also get a South American version or global version. Uh, a few wiseacres noted that I have a fancy compass on my cyber kit, but no maps. I didn't think I had to say it, but I would be carrying a map covering wherever I was in order to make full use of the compass. That said, even without a map, a compass like this is a very useful item. All right, so on to shelter. A uh, big change was made to shelter relatively recently. Now I still have the uh, yellow paracord chosen specifically for its high visibility, the emergency blanket and the chainsaw with an actual legit blade, not one of those wire saws, and the handmade paracord handles that I made for it. Uh, different is that I changed the primary shelter. So I was using a plastic sheet of painter's tarp, but I realized that it was just too thin to last more than one use. It could be easily torn by, well, anything to be honest with you. So I replaced it with this waterproof tarp that measures 87 inches by 71 inches or about seven feet by six feet. Uh, it has grommets along all four sides uh, which will aid in putting it up as an emergency shelter and it is far more durable. Um, the con however is that it does take up more room in my kit. As I'm fond of saying, when it comes to survival kits, everything is a compromise in the end. But I am very happy with this tarp. 
Okay, the water portion of my survival kit is essentially the same. Uh, we have the Sawyer filter, which will serve as the primary means of water collection slash filtration, uh, with the addition of a coffee filter, mostly just to strain the worst of the sediment from water if it's present, and to extend the life of the Sawyer before having to clean it. Now, the one change I did make was I removed one of these one liter platypus bags, which are great, but they take up a lot of room chiefly because of this. And I replaced it with a Whirlpack bag, which also holds one liter, so, but it takes up less space. Now, I'm probably gonna be adding another Whirlpack bag at some point, just to increase my ability of water storage and transportation. Okay, food. Now the only real modification I made to the food section was in the fishing kit. I'll get to that in a second. Still got the snare wire. I throw this under food, but if you've watched any of my survival videos, uh, survival kit videos anyway, you know that my thoughts on the wire snare trap uh, utility for this wire is limited. If you don't know how to do a wire snare trap, eh. Uh, I would personally use this more for equipment repair, but whatever, your mileage may vary. It's there as an option if you want to try it. Uh, also got the food pack, which is basically salt, sugar, bouillon cubes. There's a section of aluminum foil in there so you can make an ad hoc pot. Yeah, so that really hasn't changed. Uh, the uh, Changes have occurred in the fishing kit itself. Uh, I added some small octopus hooks in there, in case you're going for panfish or if they, uh, you know, going after skittish fish, then like the larger hooks that came in this. Uh, I also replaced the 12 pound mono that originally came with it with 40 pound braided line. Uh, the braided line offers far more strength and it's got the diameter of 10 pound line. So you've got more line in the same space. Eh? Eh? Uh, I also added some swivels and some eye screws. And be careful about asking for these in a hardware store. Trust me. Um, I added the eye screws so you could potentially rig up an ad hoc fishing rod, um, you know, to get that line and lure out a little bit further. So these are the changes I made to the food kit. Now on to the rest of the equipment, which I call supporting equipment. Uh, I removed the stormproof matches that were in here and added a small Bic lighter. Um, you can see there's a zip tie to secure it from accidental discharge. Uh, as much as I like the matches, and I got no problem with the Uco stormproof matches, uh, they're a more finite resource than the lighter. Um, of course, the matches can light in almost any condition and a wet lighter is hard to light. Like I said, compromises. Um, I added some pieces of fat wood to the tinder kit. Um, you know, just for some extra fire starting capability or ability. Uh, I added a waterproof paper and a pencil could come in useful. Uh, I did remove, regrettably, some paracord from the kit as it took up too much room, and I felt I had enough with the yellow paracord that I showed you earlier. Apart from that, you've got uh, a signal mirror. You got a small little first aid kit, which I may augment at some point, maybe put some pills in there like ibuprofen and aspirin, all that stuff, or more, because there is some in here but I may want to add some more. That or some of my own personal medications that I need. A small sewing kit, some zip ties, a little spork spoon thing, which doesn't take up much room, but you know, I figured what the hell. A nail, in case you have to build a house. And a good length of orange duct tape. And that's it. Uh, that's the Mark II version of my pers personal survival kit. As always, it is a work in progress. Uh, there are some additions I'd like to make, such as including sunscreen and bug dope, but I haven't found stuff small enough to include in this kit. As soon as I do, though, they're going to be in there, and you'll see them in a future Mark III video. At any rate, 
I hope you found this little jaunt through my personal primary survival kit to be at least somewhat informative. If you agree with what I have in there, feel free to comment below. Uh, and if you think that I have some obvious gap or gaps, please tell me. I'd love to know what you think that I missed. As always, I hope you have a great time outdoors and are always prepared for whatever can happen. Have yourself a great day. Take care and bye-bye.